Hello and let's talk about vacations or the lack of them rather. The past few months have dashed the hopes of many middle class and upper middle class families who would have been planning to travel to various parts in the country and even abroad. This phenomenon would have had an even more severe impact on the huge tourism and services industry in the country. Now this includes those who own hotels, those who work in small shops, act as guides at tourist spots, sell souvenirs etc. The cumulative impact of this will be quite huge and will have a long term effect on our economy in ways that may be a bit hard to visualize now. We talked to journalist Anindya Chakravarti on this issue. Thank you Anindya for joining us. So uh, today's discussion is about vacations. Have you had any this year? It's been kind of crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's, a lo- it's been a long vacation at home. <laughs> I don't mind not leaving at all. I, I <laughs> love being at home. The yes. rest of my family is really unhappy about it. It's but kind partly of... because they're not being able to leave, and the other is that they have to be with me. <laughs> right, absolutely. And it's kind of it's be, almost become a habit. But yeah, so uh, generally, uh, what do you call? Of course, we look at vacations in terms of the psychological impact, in terms of memory. But vacations also have a very key economic aspect to play, and not only for yes. uh, the family concerned in, in terms of memories, but also for a whole number of people. So what we're probably seeing is that that whole sector is going to be really badly hit. It's probably already been hit, and it's continuing probably to get worse as this festival season has come and a lot of revenue is kind of completely vanished. Yeah. So if you look at it, I think right in the beginning when the lockdown started, within a month, Fiki had come out with a report and they said that uh, there'll be a hit of about 5 lakh crore in revenue uh, to the tourism and hospitality industry, which means the entire tourism industry and hotels, of course, which is a big part of the corporate part of tourism industry. 5 lakh crore. And their estimate was that between 3.5 to 4 crore people will lose their livelihood. Now, that doesn't mean that directly uh, people who are attached to the tourism industry, but people who supply. For instance, you know that uh, there are many uh, dhabas which buy from local vegetable vendors and they buy in bulk. So when that doesn't run, then the vegetable vendor vendor is affected, right? So there's an entire supply industry to the tourism industry which gets affected. But what uh, interests me more, even more than that is not what the losses are, but what the gains are, Prashant. Of course, that would probably be, I mean, you know, if you look at it, when we all go on holidays, when was the last holiday you took? Uh, Incidentally, I had a surprise two-day break a couple of weeks ago, but otherwise it's been years. (laughs) I'm I'm the wrong person to ask on this question. (laughs) All right. So, uh, you know, for me, uh, we've been taking holidays. Several uh, of those holidays tend to be abroad. That's true. Also within India, I went to Jim Corbett last year, I went to Chandigarh last year. Uh, you know, so uh, uh, what happens is that you really don't calculate how much you've ended up spending. You think, yeah, this is an additional expenditure, but you don't really work it out into your monthly expenditure. Right? No one does. When you work it out into your monthly expenditure, it's actually quite a lot. And if you don't go on a holiday, you don't realize that uh, people go on holidays when they're, especially people with families in summer vacations, every time the schools are shut or you know, colleges are shut. So summer vacations are a big thing. Uh, winter vacations, uh, this entire Diwali, the Shara, Durga Puja period is a time when people go on short trips. So these are periods when you spend money, but you don't really look at it in a monthly basis. You look at it as an annual expenditure. And it goes out of your bank balance. You pay for tickets and stuff like that. Sometimes you get reimbursed, as in the in the case of uh, government servants, for instance. Uh, now, what happens is that ma- summer vacation is gone. No one, Durga Puja, the Shara uh, period is gone. Not more than twenty percent of people who would have otherwise gone on break have gone. Now, this entire thing is largely a middle class. In uh, if I look at a few communities, Gujaratis, for instance, and Bengalis, they are even lower middle class people go on holidays and trips, right? Uh, low cost trips, but they do go. Uh, otherwise, it's largely a middle class to affluent middle class, the upper middle class. These are the people who go. Now, uh, we would, how much do you think that Indians spend on uh, leisure travel? travel? 
Prashant. Any idea? How much no. do they household no. income? So I had actually did a bit of a uh, kind of research and found out that there was a report produced by Bain and Google in 2019, and that report uh, looks at uh, the uh, looks at amount expended spent on leisure travel and tourism overall. So right. it includes business travel and leisure travel. The leisure travel part of it in 2018 was 57 billion dollars. 57 billion dollars. And they said that it increases, it has been increasing at the rate of 13% per year, leisure travel expenditure or travel expenditure. So if one takes $57 billion in 2018, one would assume that in 2019, that's gone up to between 64 to $65 billion if expenditure has gone up by 13%. Now, we know that in 2020, of course, lockdown happened very quickly and therefore holidays didn't take place. Even holidays were at home. People didn't go out. So let's assume that, and there was a recession, middle class incomes have gone down. If middle class incomes have gone down by 10%, let's assume that if people were not scared of going out, that this was a re recession caused by something else, like let's say an oil shock, right? That has happened in the late 70s. And they said nothing to uh, make people worried about going out and spending. Then they would have spent 10% less than last year. So we come back to about $58 billion. This is an important number. $58 billion is 4.3 lakh crore. Now, how much that is, uh, just back up the envelope, guess how much that is of the GDP? Numbers. <laughs> right. Yeah, numbers. Okay. So I'm not going to. <laughs> All right. So okay, our yeah. GDP is close to 200 uh, lakh crores. Lakh crores. All right. So that is about 2% or more. 2% or more the GDP. Of course, GDP is a net income. This is uh, revenue. This is total expenditure. So some of it uh, would be passed and stuff like that. Uh, not all of it will work out for this year's uh, income. But still, and some of it is, of course, spent abroad, which is not the country's income in that sense. But if I look at it, then uh, out of that 4.3 lakh crore, which uh, people would have spent this year, despite the recession, I'm reduced it by 10 10 percent. Remember, let's assume that only 20 percent is spent, and even then, about three and a half lakh crore rupees worth of money has not been spent, which has been earned. Right. I'm saying 10 percent drop in income. Right. Yeah, exactly. Has been earned but not spent because ultimately people spend out of the disposable income, the middle class, affluent classes. That has suddenly gone up in their bank balance that suddenly appears in their bank balance because most of that expenditure would have taken place in the summer holidays and this particular uh, vacation period. Some of it, of course, in winter, and even that won't happen, right? So if you look at it, approximately three and a half lakh crores is lying. It's going to end up being in the bank balances of the middle class. More for richer people, less for middle income people. Those who have lost their jobs, obviously nothing. Those have taken pay cuts more than 10%, obviously there will be less. There are people who have got back their pay cuts, so maybe it will be more. On an average, it will be that much amount. Let's say that they end up spending 60% of it and save 40%. 60% right? of that is more than 2 lakh crore, which is 1% of India's GDP. Right? And if I actually look at the total market size of white goods, white and brown goods as they're called, which are smartphones, uh, refrigerators, television sets, laptops, computers, washing machines, microwave ovens, all those consumer durables. This is out, uh, I'm keeping cars out of it. Then the total size estimated by IBEF in 2020 was going to be about 3 lakh crores, right? I'm comparing 2 lakh crores and uh, 3 lakh crores was the total size. We know that has not happened. We know even last year that growth didn't happen. Right. Approximately, that total thing would not be more than 2.5, 2.8 lakh crores. But even if I say it's 3 lakh crores, right? Even if I say it's 3 lakh crores, then look at, compare that to the 2 lakh crores available to be spent. Right, right. Which, which would have otherwise gone into perishables, like air ticket, train ticket. You take the journey, it's gone, right? You And I'm looking at it from the side of expenditure, not income. We talk about that later, right? You eat the food in a restaurant, it's gone. You go to and live in a hotel or a guest house, it's gone. All that money is a, 
is an amount which you couldn't spend, you can buy in buying products, right. buying consumer durable, right? Mm -hmm. That could be one big reason. You're seeing the surge, there's record sales of consumer durables in this period. I don't think it has anything to do with growth in uh, um, income. Right. It is simply that people suddenly find they have bank balances which right. they didn't expect. Right. And there's this uh, flurry of sales as well from all the Absolutely. major retailers and of course the platforms. So you could say well. that happens every year. It's been right. happening for the last few years. So hmm. maybe that you could say always happens, but there has been record sales. Right. I mean, refrigerator sales have gone up. Panasonic has... Uh, I think said that refrigerator sales have gone up 71% or something like that. Their air conditioning sales have gone up. Samsung has had huge sales this year uh, in terms of revenue. There's been huge smartphone sales. So one can say that definitely there has been an increase in sale, in revenue and sales. Some of it is pent up demand, which things didn't sell. So obviously there are people are buying some of it, as you said, at discount. But I think that there is a bulk amount lying with the middle class, which they never thought, never calculated. And they would spend a certain amount of it, not entire amount of it, even if they spend 40% of it. Even 40% is somewhere close to 1.4 lakh crore. That's, that's also a lot of money to be spent in these holidays. So even if the economy is doing badly, 10% down, middle class incomes down, the simple fact that they didn't go on a holiday could probably increase uh, their uh, potential to buy consumer goods and help uh, these companies increase their revenue growth. Right. So what you're basically seeing is that uh, I mean, it's good for the people who get new goods. It's good for the companies which are selling them. Yes. But on the other hand, it's a really bad deal for a lot of people uh, who are whose, like you said, supply chains have been disrupted, whose day-to-day -day livelihoods are maybe being affected. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, if you look at it, the interesting thing is that the sales that are happening, the, uh, the high record sales, many of these are not even Indian companies. You take Samsung, you take LG, you take Dell, you take HP, you take Oppo, you take any of these which have seen massive sales. Many of these people are not Indian companies. They say they produce in India, but these are essentially assembly. Most of the parts come from elsewhere. So this trans, and on the other hand, when you do, when you look at do, domestic tourism, domestic tourism to small places, which have developed entirely as tourist hubs, those right. entire economies depend on tourism. Mm -hmm. Those are finished. There's an ecosystem out there which has right. no income right now. Right. So the net impact is actually very, very negative. Mm -hmm. Even if I look at uh, employment, now, in tourism, for every uh, lakh rupees paid, spent, right, by any company, tourist company, or any small restaurant, it creates many more jobs than it would be than it would create in a highly mechanized uh, cell phone factory or a television factory, where essentially the which are heavily capital intensive. So even if their incomes go, uh, profits go up, their sales go up. The number of additional people they hire is going to be much less. They will need to be hire, hire many more people to handle their sales, their marketing, their managing the supply chains than people who actually produce. So again, good for the middle class who get hired by these companies. It's good for media because once again, these are companies which advertise a lot, right? So suddenly they'll see that okay, our business isn't doing that badly. We're doing pretty well. And they have no reason to un to, uh, they have no way to know how they're doing well. On the other hand, all these companies which are dependent, whether it is airlines, whether it's hotels, whether it is small companies which are completely in the unorganized sector, small handicrafts, you go to a small place and you bring gifts for the entire family, right? They are finished. So the net impact is actually much more negative. And I would say that this is one of those small things which have a huge impact in terms of increasing inequality. Right, absolutely. And also because may, I guess many of these sectors which are getting affected are ones which uh, if one year they do badly, it's very difficult for them to come back in the next year because by that time the labor force is scattered, people may have to look for new jobs, move places. Many of those exactly. possibilities actually come up. Exactly. For instance, if someone's running a dhaba uh, or a small restaurant which 80% caters to tourists, and that doesn't work. They'll have to shut down and go somewhere else and do something else. Right? Exactly right. 
Can they completely restart next year? Maybe it'll take three years to happen. Precisely. So the cycle for you to even return to where you are is going to take much longer. And we know at the margins for poor people, three years is a lifetime. Exactly. Right. So overall, what we're seeing is that uh, until the lockdown maybe eases, and of course, there are experts saying that normalcy is not really even expected until 2022, maybe, because yes, yes. there's this whole cycle of getting a vaccine, distributing yeah. it, maybe giving two doses, waiting for a while. So what we're likely to see, of course, is there's also the Christmas vacation coming up, which yes. might have a very similar impact. And who knows? Even I mean, there might be a slight up. increase, like 20% right. people going might increase to 40%, but not right. right. So what we're seeing is also that this is actually something that will just keep picking up as time passes and the, uh, what do you call it? The, 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 the inequality sort of keeps widening as well. In fact, this is a problem of uh, uh, economy, which is so heavily dependent on services. Services, exactly. Services get disrupted terribly when it's a lockdown, much, much more than manufacturing. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anandya, for talking to us. Thanks a lot. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from the country and the world. Until then, keep watching News Click. Thank you.